In this video, I'm going to be attempting to do a valve clearance adjustment on my 2001 Suzuki SV650S. This is a procedure that's been kind of freaking me out for a little while, but I know that I've got one valve that's uh, out of clearance, so I need to do the adjustment, and I'm going to be actually adjusting every single one of the valves. And to get to this point, you need to remove the front wheel, all the bodywork, the seat, the rear bodywork, the front tire, the rear wheel, the radiator. I'm making all that up. You don't have to do any of that. Um, I'm actually working on some other things at this point, so that's why I've got all this stuff off. It's gonna make it easier to film though. So what I am going to need to do is pull off this cover. There's an O-ring behind there as well. I'm going to need to pull off the sight port. I will need to pull out the two spark plugs so that I can freely spin it without building compression. I will need to pull off these three bolts on each of the valve covers. I'm probably going to be bringing, I think that the uh, gaskets are going to come with it. And then we will have the cams and chain and everything exposed. We're gonna be creating, I think, a special tool to put inside of this cam chain tensioner. It's one thing I have not seen a single video on, on how that's going to work out. So I don't know precisely how that's going to look. I know that number two, this rear one, is going to be a real pain in the ass to get to, which is actually why I removed the rear wheel. And I took off the rear foot peg to get me easier access to it when I do need to get to that one. So without further ado, I think I will get those spark plugs out and the valve covers off and the sight gasket or sight, sight port open. So this should be the same on both the front and the rear. I'm gonna pull the spark plug out. There's my spark plug. These should, when you're putting this back on, don't over torque these things. I think they're only 124 inch pounds. You go too tight on these and you cause yourself a lot of problems later, which I have done on a different bike. These don't need to be nearly as tight as you might think that they need to be. I think I should be able to pull this off. There it is. All right, I've got the gasket with it on the top on the cover. And now we are seeing into here. I'm going to do the same thing on the front cylinder. And it should probably go without saying that you shouldn't uh, just follow the instructions in this video. In fact, you should simply use this as supplementary and follow what Suzuki says in their factory service manual because there's very likely to be an error in here. And uh, yes, I am removing the horn because it's in my way and I don't even want the horn on this bike anyway, so fuck this horn. So if you're just doing a valve clearance check, this is actually pretty straightforward and there shouldn't really be anything too intimidating about this. In fact, it's, it's, it's quite simple. Um, however, how I mentioned on the factory service manual earlier about following that, I have the climber, which has a known error, and that is... They have the A and the B mixed up between the intake and the exhaust. So what we're doing during this valve clearance check is checking the distance beneath the cam there and the bucket. So these are shim under bucket uh, valves. So we're going to be checking that space between there. We need to get the cams in a certain position so that we can check under them and I have the rears set up correctly. That is, the cams are pointing kind of inwards. You can see them right here. That's where the eccentric part of the lobe is right there. It's not pushing on the bucket at all. If I spin on it and I rotate it this way, it will start pushing that bucket down, which pushes the valve down into the cylinder, which opens it so it can pull the exhaust out. So I think for this, we're gonna take a look at the reading on the rear while I do the adjustment on the front first. Now, if I spin it, I'm going to go down here and spin the crank and it says, always spin it in a counter, yeah, counterclockwise rotation. And if you wanna argue with people about whether or not it hurts an engine to go backwards, you can go online and read hours and days and days worth of people fighting about that. But let's see if I can give a decent view of how this looks. Stay still. All right. When I'm rotating. So you're going to see, all right, the cams are going to start pushing now. 
So if I tried to measure that lash at this point, I'd get nothing because they're pushing down on the valves. Come on. If I keep going, it's going to take the tension off. And I can measure at this point. There's a whole bunch of points you can measure because of the fact that the cam is eccentric and there's only a couple points that it actually pushes on, the eccentric part of the cam. But it's easiest if you get it into the spots marked on the F and the R with the cams in the right position, then you know that you're in the right spot. So you can see here on the sight port mill, maybe you can see it. I'm on the R mark, and I believe the F follows 90 degrees right after, but I'm on the R mark. So what I need to do is see on here, think of them as the A's. I need those two cam lobes to be facing, like pointing this way on that one, and this way on that one. Here you can see those cam lobes are not pointing that way. In fact, I don't even know which way they're pointing, but they're not pointing up and inward. So I need to go 360 degrees on this so that I can get the R again. So quarter, let's see, is that F a quarter behind? Yeah, so the F is gonna be 90 degrees behind it. So that's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Now I gotta go slower and find the R. Where are you at? I think it's gonna be right after this mark. All right, so there's my R. Now I can see the cam lobes are pointing up and in, which means I'm gonna be able to get my feeler gauge underneath and check these clearances. So for this part, we are going to need a feeler gauge. We know that the rear cylinder is in the right spot. The tolerances on this SV650 are 0.004 thousandths of an inch to 0.008 thousandths of an inch on the intakes and 0.008 to 0.012 on the exhausts. So I'm gonna measure the exhausts now because those are gonna be the easiest to see. Where is my .008? I'm going to try to put it under the right side exhaust. And I am able to get that under, which means I'm probably in spec on that. On this one, I'm gonna try the .008. I'm gonna see, I cannot fit it through there. So I'm gonna see what is the biggest one I can fit through there. Let's try to 0.007. There's the 0 0.007. 0 0.007 fits, 0 0.008 does not, which means this one is out of spec. To be thorough, let's, let's check. I'm gonna try the 0 0.009. It's not going to fit. So this one is 0 0.008, this one is 0 0.007. That means this one is out of spec by one thousandth. This one is just on the tight end of tolerance. If I check the intakes, those have different values. They are 0.004 to 0.008. And if I give a shot on here, 0.004 goes in real easy peasy. What about 0.005? That doesn't go in, oh, okay. That's a tough 0.005 on here. I'm not gonna get a bigger version in there. 0.005 does not go in on here. So I've got 0.005 on here, and I've got 0.004 on this intake. So they're all tight. This one's out of spec. These three in spec, this one out. Same thing happens on the front cylinders, though you do have to spin the cam, and the positioning of the lobes is going to be, whoa. It's going to be the outer ones. They're gonna be kind of pointing outward. Like these are pointing inward, they're gonna be pointing outward on the front. So get the front measurements. And if you're all in spec, button the thing up, you're done. That's it. So I'm just positioning the fronts to get ready to measure. And this is in the correct spot now. You can see the cam lobes are pushing outwards. So I'm gonna be able to measure under them. It's not 90 degrees immediately after the R. It's 90 degrees plus an entire revolution. So 90 plus 360, you're at your 450 degrees after, and you'll get to the correct spot where I can then measure these. I'm just gonna verify that my readings were correct, that these are all on the utmost tightest of in-spec tolerance. And even though they are on the tightest in-spec tolerance, what I've been reading is that button it up because if it's in spec, it's in spec. Check it again in 15,000 miles, but that one's bugging me in the back, so gotta go through it. 
So there we are. All of the clearances have been checked. I actually changed my values after realizing if I did kind of shove under pretty hard with the five on the fronts. Now, I'm not like hard enough to damage something, but I can actually get a five in there. And on the left intake, if I push harder than I want to, I can actually get the five in there. So I'm calling that a five tight. I'm 0.05. On the other one, 0 .08, 0 .08 on the two front exhausts, which is right on the tight end of spec, 0 .005, 0 .004 on the intakes, etc. The one out of spec is like I expected, that exhaust in the back. So now we got to get into the actual, we're going on from valve clearance check to valve clearance adjustment. This is the part where we need to start taking off the, we got to take off uh, whatever that thing is, the cam chain protector type thingy. We have to take off the six bolts on each of these guides that the cam is riding on the journal here. The guide holds it on there. We're gonna do one at a time, not both of them. And because I am adjusting every single one of them, I'm going to open up the clearances on every valve on this bike because I'm gonna push it to the center of tolerance. This bike has got 27,000 miles on it. It's not going to change much more than this. The shim under bucket, this type of engine, it shouldn't change too much more. I know this has never had an adjustment done on it before. So pretty much where it's at now, it's probably going to be here for at least the next 20,000 miles. I'll check it again next year, but I'm just going to set it once. So I'm going to set to the center of tolerance. So the 0.04 to 0.08, I'm going to go to 0.06 roughly, and then 0.08 to 0.12, I'll just go to 0.010, depending on the shims that I've got available to me. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull those things off and then we're going to pull the cams out, tie the chain up, take pictures before we tie the chain up to make sure that we know what it looked like when it came out. And then we need to pull the shims and the buckets out with a magnetic puller. And we don't know which shims we have to put in yet because we don't know what shims are in it until we get it out of there. So unfortunately you can't go buy the shims you need beforehand because you don't know what's in there unless you just buy a big old refill kit like I did. So I hopefully have the right shims on hand if I can ever find wherever the hell I put them. Now I've got the cam chain guide removed on the front. You can see I can, it's pretty taut there. The guide is just this piece held on by three bolts that seem to be way torqued higher than I expected them to be, but that's what it is. But we can see this is at top dead center. I'm. I haven't moved the valves. This is where you would have checked the adjustment. I just wanted to document this for myself so I know what this should look like so I don't screw up the timing when we come back. There's these little markings here. We've got a B here and an A here, probably to differentiate between which cam is which. This is the intake, this is the exhaust. There's a couple important markings here, the most important being this two and the three. But I can see that there is a one F that is pointing flush with the surface here. There's this two here on the exhaust and a three here on the intake. I've put some silver Sharpie on those two that I assume will probably just get washed off, but maybe it won't. But there should be, when we put this thing back in, 16 pins between the two of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It'll be important that we get those in the exact same spot so we don't mess with the, the, uh, the timing of the engine. This is one of the two things about this procedure that's got me worried. The other being the cam chain tensioner. The next thing we gotta do is remove this cam chain tensioner right here. Something I didn't see in the manual, but I've seen in the, the one video and then some, some comment threads about this that I've been reading, is that you wanna make sure you crack this 10 millimeter nut beforehand. So I went to do that and I couldn't get it to line up and I couldn't figure out why. Oh, it's cause it, oh, it's hand tight. So, uh, I don't think that was supposed to be that way, but every time I think I know something about this bike, I get a new surprise. Uh, then you also need to get a five millimeter Allen and crack and remove these two Allen bolts down here. I'm gonna pull those out. And once you, once you commit to this, once you crack those, you're committed. You're pulling the cam chain tensioner out. So I'm pulling the cam chain tensioner out right now. After removing the quote, relatively accessible front, cam chain tensioner, which I've had to go fishing for this. Oh, it's going to fall again. I have a magnetic thing 
on your hand to grab it whenever it falls. And don't drop shit into your engine, which I've almost done. After removing this, the relatively easy one, I cannot imagine how shitty that rear is going to be. There is your cam chain tensioner. I am going to get that cleaned up. This is the gasket on it. Wow, that looks, that's a thin gasket. Anyway, I'm not buying a new gasket for it. I'm going to hope it just continues to work. But uh, that's it. Nifty device. We'll have to take this off and we're going to have to make a tool to be able to reset this thing after we set our clearances. Now, the reason I was pressing on the cam chain earlier was to feel the tension. Now that the tensioner is removed, you can see this is like no pressure and it's going to roll around there. This thing keeps all that tension on the chain. The thing is, this thing moves in one direction. It sets in one direction. Basically, we're going to have to wind it up, set it in that one direction. It's not like dynamic. It kind of only goes forward to put more tension on the chain. So now, though, because this chain is loose on here, we're going to be able to pull it backwards. And once we get these covers off, these, uh, these uh, what are they? I don't know, what, whatever keeps the cams in the journals we're gonna be able to pull one of the camshafts out. And actually, we gotta pull both camshafts out. Maybe we do one at a time, maybe we do both at a time. Let's find out. I know that I wanna keep this thing hung up so that it doesn't fall off of the, uh, the gear on the bottom because that would not be cool because that means the engine's coming out if that happens. Apparently, there is no need to secure the camshaft drive chain to the exterior of the engine. The cam chain stopper bolt, B, figure 7, prevents the chain from dropping into the crankcase. Figure 7 doesn't have a B. Uh, I think this is why it's better to invest in the factory service manual instead of cheaping out like I did. And so I don't really trust that, so I'm still, I think, going to hold that thing up. Let us remove the holders on the cam chain, or the, the bolts on the cam chain holders by going in a crisscross. I just loosened that one, that one, that one. Now I'm under this one. It's interesting because when you do crack it, it's got pressure built up inside of it and you see some splishy splashy. This is a 10 millimeter. Well, that one didn't pop as, I wanted a cool pop like the other ones. Do I get it on this one? There, see? I got some spray. Okay, we've got those removed. I believe this should pull straight up. It's going to be on, what, two dowels? Two dowels. Upper left, lower right. This is the exhaust one. Check it for where, that looks good. That looks real good. We'll know on the bottom of the journals once we get that out, but this is looking all right. I'm, I'm okay with this so far. I am okay, so now we need to get that crankshaft, or not crankshaft, so the camshaft out. <sighs> Which means, now this is where our markings are gonna become important, and I know that my silver Sharpie is gonna wear and wipe off, but 16 links between these things, I'm gonna do one at a time. I'm not taking both out. I don't think I need to take both out at the same time. <sighs> Shit, should I? I can't, in good faith, not tie this up. Even though that manual's telling me not to, I feel like that manual's wrong. I don't want this thing to drop in. All right, so you're ready to pull a shim in a bucket. You're gonna need a magnet. We're gonna take this one, which we know is at 0.008 thousandths of an inch. We don't know what's under it yet. I'm gonna take my magnet and I'm gonna pull it straight out. I don't see a shim sitting in there, so I know that the shim is in here. Bring it on over, and I can see that that one is stamped with 1.75. Now a 1.75, that was the exhaust uh, 0.008 here. I'm trying to put these all exhaust to 0 0.010, be in the center of tolerance, because I don't think they're going to drift too much more. That way it just gives me more room for error on either side. So I need to get this 0.008 to 0 0.010. So these shims come in millimeters, so these thousands of an inch, this imperial system that we should have never been taught to begin with, and it probably would have gotten through college a whole lot quicker had we never been taught it. We gotta take this to metric. So 0 0.008 inches is 0 0.2032 millimeters. We wanna get it to 0 0.010 yeah, 0 0.010 0 inches, so 0.254 millimeters. The difference between those two is the amount we need to change in the shim. So 0.254 minus 0.2032 
gives us our 0 0.0508 millimeters. You could just roughly estimate that to 0 0.05 millimeters. We have a 1.75 millimeter shim and we need to figure out which shim we need to put in it. We need to increase our clearance. So that means putting a smaller shim, a bigger shim is gonna close it. Smaller shim, you remove the shim, it's way open. I always like to go to extremes. You remove it, huge clearance. You try to put a yardstick shim inside of there, it's gonna squish, all right? There's our extremes. We need to figure out what shim we need to put in. So we need a difference of 0 0.05 millimeters. 1.75 millimeters minus 1.7 millimeters is going to give us our one. What the fuck am I talking about? 1.75 minus X equals 0 0.05. That's 1.7 millimeters. Our shim needs to be 1.7 millimeters. That's going to give us an additional 0 0.05 millimeters. That's going to give us our clearance of 0 0.10 inches. That's going to work out perfect for us. Pretty sure. Actually, I'm you know what, this one I'm actually certain about. So now that we know that we're looking for a 1.7 millimeter shim, and it's just blowing my mind. It's been so long since I've had to do like pencil math. And despite the fact that I actually have an engineering degree that took me longer than most people that have to get, and I've done a lot of pencil math, I can't fucking do it anymore. <laughs> I just do everything with a calculator and a computer. Anyway, this is our 1.75 millimeter shim. Um, what I did to choose which shims I was going to buy because I wanted them on hand before I started doing this. You could buy a whole big hot bodies kit and it comes with like three of every shim between 1.2 and 2.2 millimeters in 0.05 increments. That may not get you all the shims you actually need because from my research, most of these shims that I'm going to be pulling out should be between 1.65 and 1.85, most likely 1.65 and 1.75 millimeter shims. So if you needed all identical shims, which I essentially do, I think I'm going to need a bunch of 1.7 shims. I think I'm going to be pulling out a bunch of 1.75s and I need 1.75s. I bought this refill kit and instead for 38 bucks as opposed to the 70 bucks, this will come with five of everything between 1.5 and 1.75. So I just pulled out a 1.7, which was the shim that we're looking for. That's the shim that had a boy husky right on. Now this isn't useless anymore. This 1.75 and the fact that I measured it, I'm gonna put this into the 1.75 bucket because this may get to be used later depending on the measurements I get from the other ones. So instead, so here I'm going to put my 1.75, or sorry, 1.7 on there. 1.75 is out. So this is a smaller shim that is going in. I'm going to grab my magnet, put you in the middle. Ah, uh, I want oil. I want everything covered in oil. Now I've got oil. Come here. You're going into oil. Then you're coming back. Then you're gonna go on there. Go on there. Go. Okay, now we've got oil. Now we can put it back. And I'm gonna be, before I roll this thing over, I'm gonna be putting new oil, just, just rubbing the cams surfaces. You just wanna make sure you've got oil on all those surfaces. You don't want any metal on metal contact. Nope, I can see that didn't line up correct. I can see there's a lip right there. That didn't line up correct. And there it is. Oh, you little whore. Stop it. I guess I could just do that. Wow, that's like basically flush. Okay, oh, it should be. Okay, because that presses into it. Okay. There, that's better. All right, we adjusted one of them. Uh, now I can adjust this one. This is the same measurement. If we have the exact same shim coming out, if we got a 175, we just need a 170. What do you think it is? Could it be a 175, a 18? Oh, it's a one. This is a 171. So I'm going to treat this as if it is a 170. So the last one we needed was a 1.7. So now I'm gonna need a 1.65 to get the same amount of clearance change on this one. All right, I keep losing my place because my goddamn GoPro keeps freezing. All right, so uh, we pulled a 1.72 and I actually just realized it does actually say 1.72 on the old one. I thought it was just incorrect. Um, like it should have been 1.7 or 1.75. But this one's reading 171. 
So I'm gonna make that same 0.05 millimeter drop by putting in, so if I take this one to be a 1.7 as opposed to the 1.71 or 1.72 that it says it is, I want a 1.65, which I just pulled, the fuck is it? Okay, with a 1.65, which I'm hoping that this one here is 1.64, 1.6, okay. So I'm gonna be putting this one here into the bucket, and then I will be opening up this exhaust. And I can go a little bit over because I have plenty of room on the looser end of tolerance. If anything you wanna be on a valve adjustment, it's loose. Tight is a quicker way to kill an engine. Loose, you're gonna make a whole bunch more noise. It'll wear quicker, but tight is how you kill it and grenade it quickly. So now that I've got my new shims in, I'm going to reinstall this crankshaft. So I just, I set it in here and I can see I don't have it correct because I marked that too. And I need that to be lined up here. This is uh, not that simple to like rotate it around once it's kind of in there. And I kind of bungled it from the beginning. But, okay, so if, nope, that was one too far. All right, so if I do there and then I let this off, there's my two, this is how I took it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's where I pulled it out. I should not have affected the timing on this. Unless I'm misunderstanding it, I don't think I should have affected the timing. The only thing I affected was the clearance underneath. Now I'm gonna button this one back up and pull this one so out. one thing I'm gonna do before I button down this holder, which uh, is directional, it'll go that way, you can see it on there, is that I'm gonna throw a little more oil with this paintbrush that I never use because I'm not artistic. I'm gonna put some oil in all those surfaces. And then I've got my torque wrench ready for 88 inch pounds on all six of those bolts going in a crisscross pattern. I will tighten it down. 88 inch pounds is what the manual says hoping it's right. Alright, so I just got these all to 65. Let's go to 88. There. There. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on the intake. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother showing it because it's going to be the exact same as the exhaust here. But uh, if there's anything worth showing, I'll show you. If not, then just assume it went swimmingly. I guess this is noteworthy. So I'm just looking at one of the intakes and that's a one or a, yeah, 1 1.8 inside of there on that first one. So I thought I'd see everything between 165 and 175. So that's a 1.8. So I just take a look if I see, uh, just do a millimeter to inches conversion. I see 0 0.05 millimeters is roughly equivalent to 0 0.002 inches. So what I'm doing is I'm going down one shim size on every single shim I've got. So if I have a 0 0.008, I'm going to a 0 0.10. And if I have a 0 0.005, I'm opening it up to a 0. 007 which would put me more in the middle of the tolerance which I mean that's what that's what I want to be but I didn't expect to see a, a 1.8 oh, where are you going uh, I expected to see all 165 to 175 all right internet I'm calling you out how come nobody has a video on how to do this is it because you found it as infuriating as I did to try to film it because it's impossible and this tool is ridiculous this is a cam chain tensioner and you need a special tool from Suzuki to be able to create it. Oh God, now I got it stuck. I knew from researching this that the can chain tensioner tool was going to be the most difficult part of this entire thing. And it is the most overlooked part on every guide, right up everything I've seen about it. I've cut three designs now. This one seems to be holding. I can't actually tell you why it's holding, but I'm gonna try this one. I put my safety glasses on because I think this thing's gonna fly out. how joyful and I don't know optimistic I was to begin this thing I knew the cam chain tensioner was going to be the issue how did nobody else when they were reading all the guides and discussion on adjusting the valves not realize that the cam chain tensioner was going to be the issue and the problem is this is the easy one that rear one is in a tricky ass spot. Granted, if this tool's working like it's kind of doing right now, 
without scaring the shit out of me, then it shouldn't be that bad. Basically, I don't want to release this thing until I've got it seated against the gasket. The torque, I don't care about as much. I don't want that thing to pop until I've got it seated. And I think I'm tight. Tight on there. That may have been over 88 inch pounds. All right. So, there is our loose cam chain. Lined up, timed up, and we're going to pull this out. It's going to shoot. There it went. Hopefully I caught that. See how tight that is? Now before I forget, I gotta put this gasket on the back, which goes over here on the cam chain tensioner. All right, I'm gonna come back and hit that with a 10 millimeter, but tighten that thing up. Um, so now I can check my new clearances. So I should have opened up the exhausts and the intakes about 0 0.002 inches. So my exhausts were previously at 0 0.08 on both of them. So let's try a 0 0.09 to make sure I went in the right direction. And that fits now, that didn't fit before. And that fits now, and that did not fit before. Got a feeling I'm not gonna be able to get the 0 0.10 in on one of those. Fits on that one. Doesn't fit. Oh, okay, so that is a super tight 0 0.10, so that's it. I opened it up, but that's it. Intakes. I wanted to open those things up from 0 0.05 and a 0 0.05 tight to, I don't know, I mean, just let's we'll see. Did I get them to 0 0.07? Not that one. That one I did. So that one's a 0 0.07. Did I get the other one to a 0 0.06? Because that would be ideal. 0 0.06. 006 would put me right in the smack dab center. Oh yeah. Buttoning up the front valve cover. I've got the guide on and now I'm good to put the valve cover on. And these bolts require 124 inch pounds. Don't go over that. So I'm gonna be looking at the rear here now. What I did is I actually spun the motor and the timing mark that the viewport is on F, which is actually where you do the timing, even though it's on the rear, you set it to F. And I just wanted to get a picture for myself of this three on the exhaust, the two on the intake, 16 pins between them with the IR pointing flush at the surface there. That's how this is going to look. So I need to now get, uh, yeah. So you'll know if you're off 360 degrees, if it doesn't match this. So if you're on the F and it doesn't look like this, spin it 360 degrees and you'll be there. If you try to do it while it's in the R, which is what I was looking at first, because I figured R for rear, uh, that's not going to be correct. It won't look like, it won't look like this. It won't look like that. So this is where it needs to be. And now I've got to figure out how to get that cam chain tensioner out of there. I knew the rear cam chain tensioner was going to be the trickiest bit of this whole procedure because I can't find any video of anybody removing it and replacing it. Removing it isn't going to be that hard. Um, I have a wobble on a extended Allen. I know I can get them, so I will get those. Reseating it is going to be super difficult. I think I'm gonna have a shot with using this bendy screwdriver that I have attached this wire around that I used when I was synchronizing carburetors on a V4. I think this is the only way I'm gonna be able to do it. I, I don't know how you do this without removing the rear wheel. So let's see if I can get this bugger out. There we go. All right, I'm worried about the leverage I'm getting on the Allen inside of there. I don't want to strip it, so I'm going to start pulling shit out of here. Uh, this is the brake light switch that there's a really good chance I just uninstalled it and never put it back on. Fuck you. Oh, there it goes. Okay, now I can get that out. This is what I mean with this stiff bendy screwdrivers with the wire. It's actually pretty badass. You can get places you wouldn't expect. If I can aim, which I can't right now. Oh, come on, I just had it. I put it back on for the camera. There. There we go. Oh. 
Okay, come here, Mr. Tensioner. Let's take you over to the bench to see what we got. Got my markings there. I'm not touching the rotation at all. I'm going to do one at a time. Let's see, you going to come off easy? It is. I'll do the intakes first. Neat. All right. This is the intake here. I shouldn't need to chain this up. It's not going anywhere because I'm leaving the other cam in. Come on. Oh, come on. There. All right. Let's figure out what we got under there. We shall go with the right intake first. It's like a 170, 176. Now these are the shims that I took out of the right and the left intakes. So I had 0 .004 on the right, which is in the bottom end of tolerance. So I basically want to open that up to like 0 .006. So if I go down one shim size, it basically gives me um, 0 .002 increase on here. So this might be a little bit over that because going down to 1.75 isn't going to give me as much as I want. I'd rather be on the loose end. So I'm going to jump down to a 1.70. I checked it and this one is right on 1.70. Interesting over here though, I was thinking on here, I'm at a 0.05. I pulled out a 1.82. So I was going to say, you know what, let's just, let's do a 175. Check this. All the ones I'm checking, so that's reading 174. I was reading 173 before. I don't know if I want to go all the way down. This might be too much if I do that. So I'm getting like 173 instead of 175, and it's been dead on for the rest of them. Like if I check this one, the one that I pulled out, 182, 181. I think I might just swap over this 178 here. It'll drop me from 182 to 178 probably put me to 0 0.06, potentially 0 0.07. I think that's the right idea. So you come here, you go up there, you guys don't go get, you don't get to go in the bike right now. Well, you might get to go in the exhaust. Up first. Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to place it. I don't want to drop that into the engine. Okay, now, actually, I'm going to put the camshaft back in, yeah, I'm going to put the camshaft back in before I take this one off. I'm actually just going to reset the timing on it, hopefully, that might have been, nope, I'm off by two links. Alright, I've got my two lined back up, so now, I should be able to get to this guy. Actually, maybe I should put the holder back on so it doesn't actually make me jump. All right, let's get number two out. Is this one gonna, oh, that one's not gonna come up as easy. It's the dowel pin nearest me that is holding it up. Oh okay. yeah. And remove said camshaft. So here's what I removed from the rear on the right, which was in spec, but at .008. It says one seven, it says one, oh, it says one seven two, it is one seven two. All right, so that one makes sense. One seven two. And on the left, this is the one that was out of spec. This is what all of this is about. You, you little bastard. One seven five. One seven five, it says it's a one seven five. All right, so I'm thinking. Let me write that down. I'm thinking 165 on here. That opens, hmm, I could actually go bigger. If I'm thinking one jump in shim is worth two. So one jump in shim would put me at 0 .009. So 17 would put me at 0 .009. A 165 would put me at 0 .011. That's what I want. A 165 here and here. Do I want the same thing? I want a 165. This one's actually coming from a lower spot, though, so these actually may come out uh, looking pretty pretty similar. The difference between these 
isn't as big as these two, but this one has more clearance than that one. I think we're going to come out point close to point oh one one on both of these. That's what we're doing. Alrighty, exhaust camshaft in time. I want that three 16 pins away. I've got it marked on here. I should be able to find it. Do I have it? Oh, I think it's right on. I think it's right on. There's my two. There's my three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I've got the one R pointing at the surface there. I think that is where my timing needs to be. 88 inch pounds on both sets of these cam holders, so crisscross pattern. Probably start at 30, then I'll go to 50, and then I'll go to the 88. Get them on both. Here it is, the moment, likely an hour, that I've been fearing more than any getting this rear cam chain tensioner back on there without disturbing my tool and exploding oh i gotta put safety glasses on for this part i just remembered uh i have no idea what's actually gonna work so i'm not even gonna be able to narrate this part i'm just gonna be trying i assume this is gonna take me at least an hour so scary. Damn it. That is there. That is getting there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These gotta go to 88 inch pounds, which I'm guesstimating because I can't tell. bad boy is on there all right so now we have to pull our scary pin our special tool out and it's going to take the slack out of there i'm going to grab it in three two one it's full of oil it's going to take longer oh there it goes there we have tension on our cam chain oh, okay that wasn't as bad as i thought but I don't know how you do it without removing the rear wheel. I just don't. You gotta love it when a plan comes together. Uh, something really lucky happened for me. I actually played it right, but something really lucky happened for me when I pulled one of the old shims out and moved it to a certain spot. So, where the hell is my fuel gauge? There it is. All right, so I just checked and I am at point, I'm at a .008 tight on both the intakes. That's on the edge of tolerance. The 008 would be the edge of tolerance on the intakes but I want those near the edge and they're tight on both. But the reason I got lucky was that I moved that 178 that was over here onto the left intake as opposed to putting a 175 and the ones I was measuring were closer to 173, 174. If I would've put that in, there's a good chance I'd be out of tolerance. Lucky as shit to be able to grab the intake 178 and put it in here. And then I was able to get the .08 tight on both of those. And then on the exhaust, I'm trying, if I try to fit the point 0.011, I cannot fit it. However, if I go with the 0.010, I am in. So now I'm in the center of spec on both of the exhausts. Would I probably rather be a little looser on the exhaust? Yeah, but if I went down one more shim to 1.60, I'd be right at that 0.012 and potentially 0.013, which would put me out of spec. So I think I actually just nailed it. I got lucky because I didn't know exactly how it was gonna play out, but now I'm in. So front cylinder exhaust 0 0.010, 0 0.009. Those are in spec. I'd like that one bigger, but it's in spec It's and it's not right on the edge, so that's fine. Intakes 0 0.006 and 0 0.007, good to go. Rear 0 0.008 tight, 0 0.008 tight on the intakes. Totally cool with that. That's exactly where I would want these two to be. And then exhaust, like I just said, 0.010. I think that's it. Um, this, this procedure, like the valve clearance part, isn't the intimidating part about this at all. It's actually fairly straightforward. And if you screw it up, you can just go back and try it out. It's the timing, making sure I've got the timing right. And I will not post this video until I hear the bike run. I need to know that I did the timing right before I post this because I don't want to, if anybody did follow this, 
I don't want them to do it incorrectly because of something they saw on my video. And granted, I probably screwed something up along the way anyway. Uh, and then the cam chain tensioner, like I expected, that was the biggest bitch of the entire project. Probably the most overlooked part. Haven't seen anybody else do that. I don't know how you do it with the tire on, I, I, with the rear wheel on. I, I literally don't. Uh, I'm really glad that I didn't flip out again tonight. That was pretty awesome because last night wasn't great when I got to that cam chain guide bolt. But uh, I'll just end it here because this one's probably fucking long enough. So uh, you made it this far. Thanks for watching. Are you absolutely fucking kidding me? These come out just fine. Somebody's been in here and rounded this fucking bolt before. I can't get that fucker out. This whole thing is fucked. I can't drill it out because I'm just going to put fucking shavings all over the fucking place. I'm going to try with an impact driver. I don't, even, I don't even know how I can pop. You've got to be fucking kidding me. That bolt is absolutely not supposed to be on that tight. I tried hammering in a five and a half. I can't. I am putting this five down as far as I can get it. That's the best fitting five I have. I'm going to hit this as hard as I can, as quickly as I can, with the impact. Hoping that I can get it loose. Oh, thank fucking Christ. Why did I have to break that loose with the fucking impact? By the way, this is the best. $100 purchase I've ever made. If I didn't have that, I don't even know what kind of money I'd be into with how badly I would have just fucked this whole thing up. And why the fuck was it tightened down that fucking tight?